Namaste and welcome to Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. Today I'm very excited to introduce a new cookery that's going to be offered on our website at Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. This is an original design uh, cookery from Barun Borelli, straight from his heart and imagination. It is called the B2 Revival Cookery Set. It is uh, it's taking the traditional cookery and marrying it together with modern uh, a modern implementation with a modern uh, EDC knife and a modern uh, uh, belt carry system with this leather scabbard. Excellent, excellent design and we're going to uh, talk quite a bit about it in this video and hopefully it won't be too long. But before I do I want to introduce and show you an additional uh, cookery. This is not being offered on my website. I wish I could but it's no longer in production. This was Mike Stewart's design back in the 1990s where he took a cookery that he had uh, come up and designed and put it together with one of his popular EDC knives called the Grunt. And he put it in this very high quality leather scabbard. Now for those of you who might have some questions or doubts about uh, leather scabbards for a knife set like this as far as its longevity might be, uh, here's one that's 1990s and was used quite a bit, carried around quite a bit, and yet is in as excellent condition. Now, this is the quality of leather that you can expect from a very well-respected, well-known uh, uh, designer and blacksmith who would house his knives in good quality leather. This is uh, what I would call a Mercedes-Benz quality leather type scabbard. You have thick welts, it's a little bit rounded, uh, which is a good finish to it. Um, the, the secondary uh, sheath is attached to it with heavy welts, good stitching, uh, useful uh, tabs here with snaps, not Velcro, that houses and keeps the blades very good. And because they use good quality leather, there is no uh, uh, rusting of the blade. In other words, it wasn't tanned with urine uh, urine tan leather it was vegetable oil tan leather so it makes it a very high quality package and it has lasted for a long time another uh, uh, example of really good leather work is this particular sheet that was custom made for a GI who brought home his uh, MK3 uh, cookery from World War II and they uh, fitted this perfectly for this cookery. It works really well. Good stitching, uh, good finish to it. Very simple. There's not a whole lot of embellishment to it. It has a, the, the uh, tab for the belt uh, that's at an angle carry, which is probably what the, he, the person who originally owned this uh, wanted it for that kind of carry. And it has lasted over the, the test of time. It's, it's really good quality. Now the reason why I'm talking about that, and again also not urine uh, treated leather, it's, it's vegetable oil. And the reason why I know that is because this blade, which is quite old, is not rusted by being kept in this scabbard. Now let's face it, those of us who um, buy knives with leather scabbards, you know, some, the ones that will warn you don't leave your knife in there is usually because they're using a, a leather that has been tanned with urine. That makes the leather very acidic and it will rust the knife if it's left in there. If you're using a good quality leather that has modern tanning um, uh, methods like using vegetable oil, you can leave a knife in there uh, every day and not have to worry about it. You should always oil a high carbon blade when you're putting it in any sheath and that will protect it because uh, Let's face it, with uh, leather you've got something that's absorbent to the moisture in the air and uh, it will retain moisture in it, so you do want to protect your blade always by oiling it. With that being said, the quality of the leather work that Barun had done in this on this scabbard is fantastic. I was a little skeptical when I first saw that he had done it in, with a leather scabbard, but now that I've received it and I've been able to look at it and examine it, he did a fantastic job. This is a very high quality scabbard. The only thing I might have uh, liked to see is just a little bit more rounding uh, with a tool uh, on the sides here just to kind of give it a little bit more polished uh, finish. You don't have that kind of rough edge on it, but that's, 
I'm really nitpicking. It is very well made. It's, uh, of course, it's not made out of cow leather. It is made with buffalo hide. Good thick welts, thick welts on the side so the, the cookery blade is not going to cut through it. Single stitched. And what I also like is that he put the, the brass shape on it. That brings the traditional element of the cookery design in with the, the leather package, which is more modern, but it is also 100% functional and useful. The, the uh, leather scabbards of the Old West and of the frontier, they would do this. They would put a metal shape on the tip to protect their scabbard, which was getting, uh, uh, you know, they carried it every day. They, uh, they had it on their side when they're horseback riding, when they're, uh, you know, working with cows out in the field. You know, they're, they're squatting down on the ground, so it's hitting in the dirt. It's being uh, smacked against trees and, and uh, rocks and things like that. So the tip would get really damaged and the threading of the leather would start unraveling and pretty soon you didn't you had to replace your scabbard. With that metal shape on there, it protects it. It's better to have this get banged up than it is to start losing the integrity of your scabbard. So very, very uh, useful but also beautiful embellishment upon this, uh, this leather scabbard. Uh, it has good thick sta uh, tabs that are very functional. They do hold the cookery in very tight, eliminating any slippage. Um, and your, of course, your uh, secondary knife, your companion knife, is also attached in the scabbard right there at the front where it's easy to, to access. You can quickly get this knife out if you wanted to do some small cutting tasks around campsite or on the trail. So let's talk a little bit about this beautiful cookery. This cookery is an elegant and beautiful design, very original design of Barun Borelli. This guy, he is an artist. He, he knows how to put the right amount of embellishment and design without carrying it too far and keeping it really beautiful, very pleasing. This, this is good eye candy for those of us who are... Uh, uh, you know, cookery nuts. <laughs> we'll look at a cookery and we start drooling. It's kind of like knife porn, you know. Well, in this case, he did a fantastic job. He really uh, built a beautiful cookery. And there's a lot of form follows function in this beauty. He starts off with a small uh, scandy grind here at the, at the county and then starts widening it up to a saber ground, grind up here in the sweet spot and towards the tip. This allows for you to get in there and do your detail work. You could create your feather sticks, you can do a lot of the small notching and, and detail work right there with a, a nice scanty grind uh, bevel there and then get in to doing your splitting your, your firewood, building your shelter, clearing your brush with your wider bevel uh, up here in your sweet spot for chopping. It has a very prominent point and a good strong point so it's great for stabbing as well if you need to get um, uh, to, to pierce through something. You could definitely do it with that very good prominent tip. Beautiful detail work up here which is, follows some of the traditional styling of design that you will see on a lot of cookeries, but you'll see it over on this part instead of here. Sometimes you do see it here. But here he's really done the great detail work here. It has some brass inlay in with it. A nice deep fuller line that comes right up here at, this, at the spine um, where, the, where your um, bolster is. Brass bolster, brass uh, butt plate and keeper. It is a pan wall design so it's full tain. Uh, hard, uh, Indian rosewood hardwood handle. Uh, very beautiful. It even has a lanyard hole. Um, five inches in length so it fills the hand. If you have large hands it will fill your hand really great. Uh, for me, I have smaller hands, so it gives me a lot of purchase room. If I want to choke back for extended leverage, I can do it. I can choke up and get uh, real close and get good detail on it uh, in the use of this blade. So overall, what the specs are, it's 13-inch blade, which is 33.02 centimeters. Uh, overall, it's 19 inches when you go from tip to the uh, keeper. Uh, and that is 48.26 centimeters. Um, belly depth is two and two, uh, two and a quarter, 
uh, inches, which comes out to 6.35 centimeters. Uh, overall weight in the scabbard with the secondary knife, it is 950 grams, uh, which comes out to about 2 pounds, 1.5 ounces. The weight of the cookery itself is 564 grams, which is 1 pound, uh, 3.9 ounces. So it's not a heavy blade, even though it's a full tank construction knife. And uh, it's got great, great balance, uh, which hopefully I'm going to be able to demonstrate here without too much difficulty. It is a balanced blade and will balance on the tip of a nail, as you can see demonstrated here. If I can get it right at the right spot there. There you go. Well-balanced blade, which makes it very useful. So if you're, you know, you, that balance is where you want it to be, especially if you're choking up and you're doing your whittling and detail work. It's not going to be too front heavy or too back heavy in the handle. It's right there where it needs to be, where you can do your detail work, and yet still has the prominent weight in the, the sweet area for chopping. So this is a very well-balanced and well-designed cookery. Now, uh, with the small EDC knife, I'm going to talk a little bit further about that, which is really, really great. Um, I think he did a, a fantastic job on it, and he actually uh, followed uh, a design that's um, a popular design among knife makers here in America, and that is this little EDC guy. Now, one thing, when you're taking it out, you do need to hold that tab open uh, with your index finger when you're pulling it out, so that way you're not going to cut that tab. That tab is very important in holding that knife in the scabbard. So uh, it is. it does have a form and function to it. Here is this beautiful little EDC knife. Now, the dimensions on this, it's a 4.25 inch blade with a, a saber grind convex edge. Drop point, the tip is center line with the knife, which is perfect right where you want it to be for a piercing knife and also for, um, you know, it keeps that point right where you need it to be. Um, and it is a strong point. You've got a, a nice thick thickness right up to that tip. So you could pry with it and you're not going to have to worry about breaking the tip um, for light prying. Now, what I really like is this handle design that he did, which is um, about when you go from the top of the spine to this tip back here, it um, comes out to measuring uh, 3.7 inches. However, in this area, you're, you're roughly about a 3-inch handle, which is a good handle size for an EDC knife. Um, what I like about it is he rounded it at the top or rounded it at the bottom and yet kept the, slides, the sides relatively thin and uh, flat. So you have a very comfortable grip in your hand. You have good dexterity and control. It's not bulky. It doesn't feel like a broomstick. It's not going to roll on you. Another thing I like about it is to use the rifle uh, butt style handle, which widens and flares at the back, which locks it into your hand very well. Especially if you're, you're, you're thrusting and pulling back, um, this, this will not slide out of your hand this way or slide up with this integrated um, finger guard. So very well thought out EDC knife, very functional, um, and I am going to be doing further testing with both of these knives and demonstrating them in a, a future videos. So uh, this is it pretty much in a nutshell. The scabbard, like I said, nice thick welts, single stitch all the way around, has good wide belt loops that are thick leather. Um, this will allow and accommodate a military uh, a web belt. Uh, you could carry it for higher carrier or for dangle carry. Um, you could even put some straps through here and attach it to your, your backpack and carry it on the outside of your backpack if you wish. Uh, the, the tabs are very thick and what's also nice is like this one you can actually tuck behind so when you're withdrawing or putting your cookery back you don't have to worry about endangering cutting that, uh, that leather and that leather is important. This one back here does prevent handle slap when you're carrying it on your side. It also locks it in so it doesn't have much slippage, which is very good. So you don't, your cookery is not going to be moving around in the scabbard on you. 
and exposing cutting edge. So very, very well thought out, very good, high quality. Um, for this uh, knife, obviously they must be doing something right in their tanning process because I've had this cookery in its sheath for a couple days now and I don't see any signs of rust. If it was uh, urine uh, tanned, I would have already seen uh, rust spots appearing. And I don't see any of that, so it's been tanned well. And uh, what will keep the life of this scabbard even better is if you uh, impregnate it with uh, mink oil, which will waterproof it and also keep, uh, keep this leather nice and, and uh, subtle. It won't, you won't end up with cracked leather, and, uh, and it'll be good. It'll be perfect for carrying out in the field. This will be a great tool for hunters, for backpackers, campers, Great for an EDC pack or for, or for I mean, a uh, emergency pack, um, bug out gear. This is a great combination set. You carry these two, you won't need to carry any other knives. You've got your EDC knife and you've got your heavy blade for chopping and clearing. So uh, please look for this on uh, our website at, at Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment sections on my YouTube channel or also you can visit my uh, Facebook page at Blue Dragonfly Training Post and leave questions and comments there as well. Uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and uh, be looking out for this, this cookery. It will be added to our website within the next uh, week or so. Also, you will find it uh, most likely being offered on uh, Baroon's own website at um, uh, <laughs> sorry, at CotangCookeryHandicrafts.com Thank you very much for watching. Namaste and God bless.